Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. So check it out. The D6 Squad has merch now. We got hoodies, tees, mugs, whatever you need. Check it out. Link in the description. What's going on YouTube? Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. So the Giants have decided to restructure Levine Toy Lolo. And what does that mean? Not much of anything. I mean, Toy Lolo is, he's, he's a nobody. If, you, if you're going to be honest, and I mean, no disrespect to him personally, but he's a back in the back of the roster kind of guy. He is a guy who's supposed to be a blocking tight end. We brought him in to be a blocking, dominant blocker type of a tight end. And week one, week two, week three, pretty much the entire season, really horribly at the beginning of the season, he was not a good blocker. He was not a good blocker. And of course, he does not offer much as a receiving tight end. That's not what he was brought in to do. Um, Caden Smith ended up being the best blocking tight end over the entire course of the season. Him and Evan Ingram, Toy Lolo and Evan Ingram had their struggles. Uh, Evan Ingram at least offered the ability to, to be a dynamic player when he catches the ball, but uh, at least he provides that. What is Toy Lolo providing? If he's not going to be a, a good, decent blocker, there's no reason to bring him back. It really doesn't make any sense that they will pay him $2.95 million just to come back here and, and not block. So I'm expecting that he's going to be really involved. They're going to be doing a lot of two tight end things. And maybe this, moves, maybe this means we're moving away from Evan Ingram. Maybe that's the case. But paying him almost $3 million to me is unnecessary. I feel that you could have gotten a good blocking tight end in the draft, uh, maybe paid less than that and gotten a good blocking tight end elsewhere, paid him maybe one something million instead of 2.95. Because when you look at that 3 million, that's basically what that rounds up to is 3 million. You can apply that 3 million in a lot of different places. And him cutting him along with other guys like Cody Core, who now I'm looking at might, they might bring Cody Core back too. When you look at all of these players, if you make all of these cuts of these unnecessary back of the end roster kind of players and replace them with low cost options and draft picks that way you can actually build out the top part of your team the, the needs of your team if you cut five players who are making two million who all are guys who aren't getting significant playing time guess what that's clearing up 10 million now that's just a hypothetical thing i don't think we have five or six players who are making two million that we just can cut uh, that we already haven't already cut but these two $3 million contracts add up, and we have to be cognizant of the fact that we need to clear out cap space. Maybe they know something that I don't know. Maybe that's just the case, but I'm just not seeing how this makes any sense. But if we do this, it, I mean, since we're doing this, apparently we are going to do it, Evan Ingram has to go. I've made my discussions, I've made my videos in the past, I've talked about it on streams. Evan Ingram has just got to go. It's, it's no bones about it, he's got to go. Because when you look at this situation, we're paying three million uh, to Toy Lolo, and then about seven and a half million to Evan Ingram. So that means we're paying about, what, 10 or 11 million to tight ends that aren't necessarily useful. And that's, that's a problem to me. We can cut in Evan Ingram, or trade in Evan Ingram, and we get all of his cap space back. And we have a guy who's consistent, who's reliable, who can do both block and catch, and Caden Smith there. Even if you get a, a late round tight end, a fourth, fifth round tight end, no matter, you know, depending on what you would get for trading Evan Ingram, I think that would be a serviceable guy who maybe could give you better receiving if you think you can get better receiving than Caden Smith, and also be a decent blocker. It doesn't make much sense that we have Toy Lolo here. Maybe he's a guy that gets cut in training camp. You know, when you're dealing with the 53-man roster, maybe that's just it. You just cut him then. But Toy Lolo is, he's Toy Lolo. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not looking for much from the guy. And I'm surprised that we decided to bring him back. A lot of us wrote this contract off as a contract that we can easily get out of, that we could easily cut and use that money to go towards other things. Now, as I said, Evan Ingram, at this point, he has to be looking, you know, he has to be on the trade block because 
if you think about it, we get a fourth round pick for Evan Ingram. We take someone, I think Brevin Jordan will probably be gone in the second round, but we take, you know, any of these late round tight ends. I think they can be solid receivers, you know, maybe decent blockers. And, you know, everybody says you can just find the tight end wherever you want in a draft because people try to de devalue the position. But one thing I do know is we cannot have the tight end being the sole reason that we're losing games. We can't have the tight end being reasons we're losing games. We can't have a tight end dropping 11 passes, especially when those passes are usually in the, in the middle of the field, especially when our offensive coordinator doesn't necessarily know how to use the tight end that we have. We have a lot of things going on with our team right now that just don't match what Evan Ingram is doing. Now, maybe he's talking to a sports psychologist as we speak, and he's going to be a dominant tight end next year, and he's going to be catching everything that they throw towards him. But that's another risk. Trade him right now while he has value, while you don't have to franchise tag him because he'll be a free agent next year regardless. You're just going to let that dude walk? Depending on the kind of contract he gets, you might not even get a third round or fourth round comp pick for it. So try to trade him right now to just take the sure value this year, build your team, use that pick to build up the New York football giants for 2021. Give Daniel Jones a reliable tight end target. Give Daniel Jones, you know, or give the team, you know, whatever you can take with that fourth round. I think we can get a wide receiver in the fourth round. I think we can do a lot of things in this fourth round that will help the team literally day one. And if we can't do anything with that fourth rounder, we can use that fourth rounder that we would get from an Evan Ingram or, you know, use Evan Ingram on draft day to package that with other picks to move up and take a guy that we want. That could be in the second, third round. There's a lot of ways we can leverage Evan Ingram. And I've talked about this weeks for weeks now. He has to be leveraged with picks to make this team better. There is no excuse that we should just be rolling out Evan Ingram again and just expecting a different result. I really like him as a person. He's a really cool dude. He really is. But when he gets on the field, he starts to have all kinds of mind games going on in his head, and he can't catch the ball. He just can't catch it. And when you're dropping the ball, like I said, in the middle of the field, accidents tend to happen. So that's why I wanted a guy like Kyle Pitts, who's 6'6", who they can actually go up and get the ball. Evan Ingram doesn't provide that vertical kind of threat. Uh, and I don't want to turn this into an Evan Ingram video. This is about Toy Lolo, but m molding in all of this cap space that we're putting into the tight end, which might be one of our weakest positions, is kind of ridiculous to me. So before I go off on a, uh, on a two-hour Evan Ingram tangent, Toy Lolo is back. I'm thinking he still may be a candidate to be cut uh, when we have this upcoming season. Maybe if we, you know, draft a tight end or do whatever we have to do. I think he's a candidate to still probably be on the chopping block at the end of this offseason, you know, after training camp and stuff. But for now, he's on the roster. Hopefully, he can get back to being the dominant blocker that he was before he got here. Hopefully, he's more comfortable and he knows his assignments. Other than that, it's nothing we can really do. I mean, we're watching the Giants. We, we'll either watch them crash and burn or make this team a lot better. So if you made it this deep into the video... I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell. And listen, I make all kinds of content for NFL teams. So if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know and have a good one.